Hi, welcome to the Physics 2 tutor, and in this section we're going to tackle the topic of heat transfer, okay? Now we've talked about heat a lot in this course, and we've talked about it in terms of adding heat to a system, or heat coming out of a system, heat being that, that quantity that basically transfers the energy, the high energy of motion of molecules, you know, down from a higher energy state down to a lower energy state. So something that's hotter is naturally going to cool off. We all, we all know this. This is talking about things that we have a lot of experience with in everyday life. You put a, uh, a, uh, a red hot iron coming out of a fire, you put it in the, uh, in the air, and after a few hours it's going to be very okay to touch it. If you, if you were to plunge it in ice water, it's going to cool off extremely quickly. But in all of these cases, the hot object gives off its heat somehow and goes out into the environment, right? And so it, it eventually reaches, it comes down and reaches equilibrium with the environmental temperature. So we know that heat naturally always travels, whatever this quantity of heat is, it travels from the hotter object out to the environment. The question in this section is, how does that happen? And can we calculate that with practical everyday um, you know, experience? Can we quantify that? Can we somehow put a number to it? So there are basically three ways in which heat can actually be transferred uh, from one from object A to object v, B basically and you always have experience with all three of these even if you probably don't think that you that you do. The three ways in which it can happen is conduction, convection, and radiation and all three of those words even if you don't have the physics definition just yet they all should mean something to you and so you have experience with them uh, every day. The first one that we're going to talk about here, and I've kind of got them ordered in a certain order because I think the lesson will flow better this way, is we're going to talk about convection because I think convection is probably one of the easier ones to really understand, um, and I think we've all seen that. You, you've noticed how when you go and you look, uh, when you go do a barbecue, you uh, light the coals in your barbecue, and uh, you know you kind of stand back from it and kind of gaze at it and kind of at a glancing, the glancing look right over the hot coals. You'll see the shimmering uh, kind of call it a heat wave really, but what's really happening is that that hot coal is heating up the air, right? And so the hot air, what happens to hot air? It rises, just, be, just the same way that a hot air balloon rises, because when you heat air up, it becomes less dense. The molecules start bouncing around and colliding more because they're, they're having more energy from the heat, and so they tend to spread out a little bit, so it makes the, the gas less dense. And you know from physics one that when you have a less dense object in a fluid, the fluid is the air here, it tends to rise. The same way a piece of wood floats, the less dense air rises from the remaining air that's cooler. Okay, So it starts to go up. And what ends up happening here, let's draw a picture and we'll figure out the whole cycle of what convection really is. So uh, if you wanted to do a definition of convection, what I want to do is just sort of write down the words and then draw a quick picture because pictures are good. Basically convection happens when a fluid, and I'm going to put here usually air, it can happen in any fluid, but usually we're talking about air. Usually air is in contact with a hotter object circular patterns of heating and cooling develop. Okay? They develop. Okay, so what does that mean to you and me? Uh, really this definition doesn't mean all that much until we draw a picture. So what we have here is, let's draw a little candle, right? I'm not a very great artist, but you can kind of see here is our candle. Alright, now what's it going to do? Let's make the candle just a little bit shorter. It'll make our drawing go a little bit better. Candles like this. What's it going to do? It's obviously hot. So what happens over here is that this air right next to the candle all around here, let's start on this side, this air, um, it, it, gets, it gets hotter and so it becomes less dense because the air, the, the atoms are kind of spreading out a little bit here and so it begins to rise. So the air begins to rise and eventually it's going to rise, you know, just like you might expect at a certain distance above and eventually it's going to cool off because as it rises it gets farther away from the flame, right? So it's going to start to go up. That's the shimmering that you see coming off of your barbecue pit. And so it goes up and it gets cool again. So what happens when it cools off? Well, it goes back to its original I guess density because the things start to, to cool off and the, the air returns to its normal density so it gets colder again, colder with respect to the hot air that's around it because we're heating up the air. 